Yo, welcome guys to the first video of the series where I will show you everything you need to know about every dungeon in the game. And we are talking here about the fastest pathing in the dungeon, how to use maybe some exploits to get like behind mini bosses, maybe glitch in some terrain if that's possible. Then we will take a look at all the mechanics the boss have and how to beat them the most efficient while keeping your DPS at the highest pace. And we are starting with the Cave of Destruction. The reason why that is the first dungeon in the series is actually simple. Once global releases, I would say the most of the damage dealers will want to farm this dungeon first. Because here you're dropping the Bracers with 4 Perception, which is fairly good early on for PvE. You are dropping the Chest with 4 stat points and heavy attack chance, which is really rarely being found on a chest. And you have the cloak with mana regen and cooldown speed, which also the majority of builds are using. If I would be you on global release, pack out that guide again and start slaying Ligurius first. Let's start with the team setup you should have. If you're just freshly level 50, you will want to play a Holy Trinity setup with classic, with a tank, a healer and 4 DPS. If you're growing stronger later, you will run 5 DPS and 1 off tank. The first cave of the dungeon is pretty unspectacular. You will have a bunch of ants spawning that you can just mow through. In the second cave, you will now be confronted with spinning ants. Here, to be most efficient, you want to kill all Nathetic ants before they are spawning, because if they are spawning, they will gain HP additionally. Also, you want to let the Exidic ones just spawn and walk straight into them. This triggers an explosion that you can just block with your defensive skill, and it's basically like you killed it with one shot instead of putting on a long kiting fight. In the third cave, you want to kill the eggs with highest priority. As they spawn the boss, and once three ants are connected to the egg, those are your primary target. Don't waste any DPS on anything else. Here, you will also get introduced to worms for the first time. Those are being spawned by the mini boss around your neck. If you see this, instantly look at your buff bar and check the debuff timer. Once the timer is at one second, you can block the damage easy with your defensive skill. This way it's much easier to pull off than looking at the color changes on the worm itself. Congratulations, you have now made it to the boss. And to initially spawn it, you will have to climb the three stones around the middle of the cave and kill the eggs on top of it. Sorry to interrupt, but short self-promotion is needed. Currently, 91.2% of the people watching the videos are not subscribed to the channel. So let's make a deal. If you learn something new in this video, you have to subscribe. Now that the boss is spawned, you always want the tank to throw aggro first. If we are looking at the fight from a tank's perspective, the boss will constantly challenge you with fury attack the whole fight and you will need to block all of them. Otherwise, your team will be hit by a heavy AoE attack and it's likely to wipe. The rest of the team is just going full DPS in the first stage. And after a while, you will notice either a red or a blue circle spawning behind you. So always keep your camera angle sideways to not miss it. Color of the circle you have to remember. Then the boss will spawn ads in form of ants and you are only allowed to kill ants with the same color as the circle that just spawned. Don't waste any DPS on the rest, they will deem spawn by themselves. The same color ant needs to be killed close to your tank. Because after the ant dies, she will spawn a circle same color as your previous circle behind you and everyone from your team has to stay in it. Then after the circle erupt, you will see a colored ring around your character and this is now your entry card to ride the pillar elevator. You will now pay really close attention to the head of the boss and as soon as he starts to scream, you will run to the colored area of your circle and stay in the middle. After a while, a pillar will elevate and allowing you to dodge the one-shot mechanic of the boss. While you are on the pillar, you will have to spot an ant spawning on one of the stones you originally had to kill the eggs on to spawn the boss. You will all fly over there as soon as possible. Don't wait until you get knocked in the air by the game. One exception is, if the ant spawns on the stone farthest away from you, there you want to morph at the highest level that you're being thrown up, and then you will instantly want to look up all the way in the air, you want to glide and you want to spam spacebar until you get that extra elevation. This is the only way to land directly on the stone and not waste any time running up behind it. Once your party successfully entered the stone, 
you will have to kill that small ant as fast as possible. Because the whole time the ant is alive, the whole party receives a poison debuff. Once the end is dead, you will immediately fly back in the middle and the tank uses aggression spells to get the aggro of the boss back. This is also the first time a healer has to pay lots of attention because you will now have to aggressively heal your tank and maybe some damage dealers if the kill of the poison end was slow. Depending on your DPS, you will repeat this mechanic multiple times until you reach his lower percentages. Then he has one more trick up his sleeve. He will now also spawn worms around your neck, like the previous mini boss. But the color coding is a little different. Some players will get some kind of yellow, while others will get some kind of green. And you will need to get close to each other now to neutralize it. If you fail, don't worry, you will mostly only lose a bit of DPS uptime and can fly back to safety this skill is not dealing a lot of damage. Well done! You have defeated your first dungeon and can now loot the boss chest by spending 300 dimensional contract tokens. Yeah, that's it. First video of the series. If you still have any questions, just let me know in the comments. As always, I will answer everything in less than 24 hours. Cheers, guys.